The current date is January of 2023. Welcome to the Time Capsule Podcast, where every episode is like its own little time capsule. We're going to be leaving these recordings here, and we won't be touching them for another 20 years, but you guys can listen to them whenever and wherever you like. Without further ado, let's jump into the episode. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Time Capsule Podcast. That's right, new year, new look, and for me, new desk and new setup. Everything is looking great in my room. Um, unfortunately, this time around, Brian can't see it because I did not get to setting up my camera in time, but that's okay. Brian, how are you doing? I'm not too bad, actually. I'm a little tired right now, but other than that, not terrible. Good, good. So, a little little heads up for this month's episode. Unfortunately, David could not join us this time around. Uh, he He's in a tumultuous time in his life right now. Very busy. It's... um. His senior year of high school, the final semester, uh, it was definitely a busy time for me. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna give him uh, the, uh, the the pass this time around, but hopefully hopefully he'll be with us next month. Hopefully, yeah. I I know, yeah. I, I apologize to all of our listeners out there. We all apologize. It is I know it's it's late in the month. We're getting to this a lot later than we really wanted to. Um, we just like like Jay said, it's been really busy for for all of us, and unfortunately, yeah, David wasn't able to make it here today. But it's okay. We'll we'll still try to keep you guys entertained for the next however long, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Yes, I'd also like to announce um, something else. So uh, back back when on in episode thir- thirteen when we were opening my dad's time capsule, I kind of you know I was thinking about how. It's cool to to um, watch to 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 witness this rear thing re- reopening and unearthing of history, but it's a shame that obviously you no know, we weren't able to participate in that. And it got me thinking. You know what? What if the audience, our audience, feels the same way? So now I have set a little something up, and if you want to leave a little voice message, voicemail, whatever you, however you want to refer to it. You can go to speakpipe.com slash the time capsule. Actually, no, I think it's just slash time capsule podcast. Uh, and you will be able to leave us a message and we will play them probably at the end of every episode. Uh, and um, we'll try to get to everyone. But, you know, I'm just going to say no guarantees right now. Uh, obviously, our our um, following is pretty small right now, so it shouldn't be a problem. But, uh, you know, I don't want to paint myself in the old corner as far as the future goes so yeah once again that's speakpipe.com slash time castle podcast it might be the time castle podcast i can't remember off the top of my head um, either way not we'll, we'll put the link in the description keep that in mind yeah i'll i'll figure that out by the time you upload this hopefully so what's new with you brian uh not much honestly um work has just been work uh i did get a raise recently which is nice hey um, congratulations thank you thank you uh, I don't know. Not too much has been going on lately. It's just work and then spend time with my girlfriend. That's, that's about all it's consisted of my life recently. Yeah. Um, nothing too exciting that I can think of. At least not yet. Something is going to be exciting happening soon, but I'm not going to say anything else until it uh, does happen. You know what? Same here. I've got something in the works that I wanted to announce, but, um, I haven't been able to fully seal it by this by the time we're recording right now, so uh, I'll I'll let you all know what that is when the time comes, the proper time comes. Um, that being said, what was your favorite pr- Christmas present the last year? Oh boy, I gotta remember what I got. Um, I don't remember what I got. What did I get? <laughs> it was a whole month ago. It's been a while. It's true. Yeah, actually, yeah, literally. <laughs> to the yeah, day. literally a month That's ago. Hilarious. <laughs> I didn't even think uh, my, about that. I, I didn't plan that out at all. I swear. <laughs> um, my brother got me um a couple sets of Doctor Squatch bars, uh, soap bars. Doctor like Squatch. The, they're like the Star Wars themed bars of soap, and they they actually smell pretty good. They clean really well too, so that's nice. Hashtag not sponsored. Wow, I've, um, I've never heard of that actually. Do they have really? a Chewbacca okay. on the cover? Um, I don't know if there's a Chewbacca one, but there's there's definitely one with like Obi Wan Kenobi. There's one with Yoda, one with 
um, Darth Maul and one with uh, the Emperor. Th- those are like in the uh, original trilogy box. And then I al- he also got me a, a sequel box with uh, Rey, Kylo, um, Snoke, and somebody. And I think Luke, I think, was the other one. The other hero. Mm, nice. Um, they all they all have like I it's like I'm doing an ad for them or something, but they all have like different grittiness uh textures to them so you don't like you can either no grit or heavy grit, which will help clean your skin better depending on which one you use. And uh, I mean they smell really good too. The, I they clean really well and they're cold process soaps um made with all natural ingredients. Mm. So it's not like heavily chemical or heavy chemicals from a bottle. I see. But yeah, I, I like those. Those are really nice. I bet they are. I bet they are. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to like do something in the background while I... Okay. Um, let no, me fine. reorient my focus <laughs> here. So, uh, for me, my favorite Christmas present um, would probably have to be... Uh, I finally got an Xbox One after... However many years it's been. Let oh, nice. See. Yeah. Uh, it was a present from my sister's boyfriend. Shout out to Caleb S. You know who you are. Uh, <laughs> but yes, I, I got that and I have the original copy of Minecraft Xbox One Edition, which ended up being uh, more handy than than it sounds, than it would sound. Because it's actually a distinctly different version than um, current modern Bedrock. Um, mm, so yep. yeah, there's that. Nice. Yeah, okay. 2013 is when it was released, so 10 years later, almost. <laughs> the Xbox One came out in 2013. Yep. North American release, uh, November 22nd, 2013. Are you serious? It's that old already? Yeah, man. Dude, that's insane. I can feel the wrinkles increasingly forming on my face. When did the PS4 come out? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I just closed the tab. Hold on. Uh, November 15th of that same year. There's there's no way. Yeah, man. That thing's 10 years old. That, uh... <laughs> that particular generation of consoles, I'd say, was a very long lifespan. Alright, there's still some of my favorite eight. consoles. I mean, even the so I mean, even the PS Five is what what three years old now. Oh wow! So Already? Man. Yeah. Dang. Okay. <laughs> so, know. any any other small talk you had that you want to talk about? Have you seen the trailer for the next Spec to the Future movie? Stop it! Stop! Right now? Are you messing with me? No, I'm not messing with you. You're making a Back to the Future Four with the original actors. All right. You know what? Not that I'm not that I'm like. I don't believe you until I see it for myself. That's a, I don't, I don't know how to feel about this, man. I, 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 I don't think it should happen. Um, three was fine. Having three movies was fine. They ended it. They tied it up in a nice little bow. The DeLorean was destroyed. Um, Doc and family flew into the, into wherever in their train. And that was that. We don't need more story. We don't need it to be bungled. <laughs> we don't need a cash grab. I feel very passionately about this, and so do so does pretty much every other fan of Back to the Future. I'm thoroughly shook. I had no idea that that was happening. Yeah, a teaser trailer was released the other day. I will say, um, I, I don't know if you listen to um, or, or watch Channel Awesome on YouTube. They're best known for the Nostalgia Critic. I don't watch the Nostalgia Critic, but I do listen to the Fanscription podcast where they like fan write uh, scripts for movies that well, I guess until very recently they thought would never exist, and one of them is what if Back to the Future 4 happened? And I gotta be honest, I didn't hate their script. It's actually not that bad. Um, but that's because it, it took from a lot of already existing uh, Back to the Future canon that takes place after the third movie. Yeah. Uh, that being said, there that's probably not what again, what's the fourth movie is going to be. So Yeah, I, I haven't... I've done a little bit of research on it, and, and it looks real I, the first thing i saw i saw the trailer on facebook so i got a little skeptical so i did look it up and there was a trailer um i think screen culture did a, has it up on their youtube or whatever 
Um, and I, I, from what I read, there's like there are places saying that it does exist, and there are other places saying it's not confirmed. So I don't know, but like mm. I, I obviously you're you'll probably be better with the research on that. But uh, yeah, okay, it it looked real, and I, I I've everything everything about it looked legit, but. I'm going to say right now, I'm not going to believe it until I see something posted about it by an official Universal Studios account on on um, social media. Like, I'm aware that there are several YouTube channels that are not official studios that post real movie trailers, but that is where I stand. Okay. Uh, if you find out something different, let me know. Absolutely. I just, yeah, thought, I just thought it would be something you'd be interested in if it, if it is actually happening. Mm-hmm. You know, actually, also, um, did anything noteworthy happen um, during Thanksgiving for you? Because I just realized we, we haven't, as a podcast, we haven't gotten together since before Thanksgiving. Oh, you're right. Which is kind of uh, wild if you think about it. Yeah, it is. Uh, no, not, well, not that I can remember. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I will say, and I don't mean to, like, bring the mood down, but um, literally thanksgiving night um like so like for thanksgiving day we um did like a a two family thanksgiving with a with friends of ours and uh we also brought my grandfather over uh to our house to spend time with him he for context he's uh has um dementia and we were at the time we were looking for a like a assisted living home to land him in after we after he moved out of his house and uh so think so so he he was at our house and then like you know afternoon late afternoon he's like all right i want to go home and so my dad takes him home and they're they're gone for hours and 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 you know eventually it gets to be like six or so and we've been playing board games for a while and uh dad calls us and he's like um so i need uh help getting po- getting we call them pops we're getting pops into the van so i can take him to the hospital <laughs> because he's got severe pain in his gut and we're like my mom was like just just call an ambulance and so he ended up getting admitted to the hospital on thanksgiving night uh with infections in his intestine um arrhythmia and i'm sorry afib not a well it's they're very similar afib uh and something some other third thing that i can't remember off the top of my head so that was that it was a Sad note to end Thanksgiving on, but other than that, it was good. Well, that's good. Yeah, and, well, and it's it, not you know, good, but it... he's doing a, a better now. They shocked his heart back into rhythm. The infection seems to have gone down or away, and he's now living in an assisted living home that we uh, don't hate. <laughs> so, well, that's so that. that's really good. <laughs> yeah. It's Okie bad. dokie. I've I've got a, a little bit more small talk though that I want to get out of the way. Oh. Uh, you oh, okay. Know, I just have Sorry. a brief <laughs> list that I'll go through. And or Chuck E. Cheese. My dad bit a kid. You know the. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, so have you seen Andor? Uh, yes. Okay. Quite possibly the best Star Wars media that's come out since Disney bought the IP. Um. I can't decide personally whether or not I like that more or the Mandalorian, but um, I don't know. They, it's very good very, stuff. Very good. I I'm honestly was I am surprised at just how how good it ended up being. Uh, yeah, I was too. I wasn't expecting it to be that good. Um, because I mean, besides the Mandalorian, what we had a uh, book of Boba Fett. Um, Shoot, there's one other show. Gosh, what was it? <laughs> I feel like uh, there's Clone Wars, the final season. No, I was trying to think of another. I thought thought there was another live action show that I'm forgetting, but I don't remember. Uh, um, whatever. If there is, we'll look dumb. But if there's not, then we're smart. Anyway. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. But Book of Boba Fett, it was as good as it was. It left a little bit to be desired, and yeah. so I was. My hopes were not too terribly high for Andor, but uh. They yeah. definitely pulled through. It Absolutely, was really well done. And this is, the, <laughs> uh, this is everyone's going to be like, "Yeah, we all know that," because like we're the last people to talk about this show. But it's fine. 
Um, <laughs> let me ask you, when was the last time, if ever, you were in a Chuck E. Cheese's? It's been years, dude. Exactly, like, right? Yeah. Well, um, in early December, I went to Wichita to go be with, with some family for... Actually, it wasn't for Christmas. Uh, it was for my first cousin i think it's birthday I don't, it's their cousin of, they're they're the kid of my actual co- like cousin i think it's maybe then it's the second cousin well yeah it's your second cousin. yeah okay yep. sorry anyway um and their their birthday party was hosted at uh, the local Chuck E. cheese and what's interesting was i actually did a very similar thing in 2018 where we went down there and we and it, their his party was at uh, the Chuck E. cheese the very same Chuck E. cheese we went to last year but in 2018, um, the old animatronics were still in the arcade. And uh, are you serious? Yeah, and they were just as creepy and weird looking as ever. Uh, and but this time, when I went last December last month, uh, they were gone. They had been removed, and I was I was Aww. pretty sad about that. But what was interesting was, in in place of where the show stage had been, there was a giant LED screen with a uh, modern CGI Chucky dancing around on it. And on the left and the right sides were these like posters of the four main characters or four of the main characters, I should say. Uh, but it was, it was not just their faces. It was their silhouettes of their whole bodies. And it was very much a security breach vibe. Yeah. I was going to say that's, that's kind of spooky, dude. Yeah. Like, and, and I did see, um, they still have like a mascot suit that you wear. He came out to play. <laughs> I'd rather he didn't. <laughs> uh, wouldn't we all? Yeah, if if I'm familiar with any lore about people wearing giant animatronic suits, I'm I'm rather he just stay in the back. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, stay stay back there. Uh, speaking of FNAF, did you did you see the um, recent like cast release? It was only two of them um, for the f- upcoming movie. No, because I I've heard so many things about that movie over the years. Like it keeps getting canceled, and it keeps getting like picked no, up by somebody else. No, it's just been getting else. delayed repeatedly. But they they've locked down a studio. It's going to be Blumhouse, uh, which I'm excited about because they're they're quality movie makers. And they recently announced that Matthew Lillard, who plays Shaggy in the live action mm-hmm. Scooby Doo movies, is going to be William Afton. <laughs> he he plays horror films good. Like he is a very good horror horror film um actor yeah and he's a really good shaggy he is a really good shaggy yes excellent. although you could argue you could argue that those live action scooby-doo movies are horror movies <laughs> uh, in a way i are. guess especially was it the first one where like where scrappy Doo like um i think he he took some sort of like potion or injection or something that made him like giant and ripped no, so that was that was the second one, and that was actually Scooby and Shaggy both ingested that. No, I remember like because w- wasn't Scrappy the antagonist of the first one? I don't remember. I don't think so. Scrappy is. I thought Scrappy was on their team. No, yeah, he is. But I think the joke was that like because everyone kind of hates on him, right? Because he's the, the annoying yeah. tiny one. And so I think mm-hmm. the joke was he was tired of getting all that hate, and so he he like engineered the events of the movie to seek revenge on the mystery mystery ink gang but i don't remember if that i'm pretty sure that was the first one and he he like used something to become like giant and, and angry and ripped uh you know as part of like the the like fi- it would have been like the boss the final boss if it was a video game like toward the end of the movie and um like scooby face off against him and like fought and like beat him up and defeated him i it's Again, it's been it's years been, since I've seen that movie. Yeah, it's been too long since I've seen the first one. I watched the second one semi recently, so that's how I know that they do that. They're drinking like Shaggy and Scooby are drinking a bunch of potions, and Shaggy ends up drinking one that makes him super buff. Yeah, yeah. And is isn't that the yeah. where the where the are you challenging me meme is from? Yeah, yep. yep. <laughs> uh, good times, man. <laughs> Um, interesting yeah. times and uh, as my final little bit of small talk uh, my dad bit a kid uh, on the very same Wichita trip where I went to Chuck E. Cheese we were so we stayed in a hotel while we were there because my cousin's house isn't big enough 
to have us living there as well. Which that's you know it's not a problem. But uh, anyway, we had, we were, we uh, had just finished eating breakfast in uh, the little like breakfast area, which is right off the lobby. lobby. Sorry, I'm like failing to speak English properly right now. Your and brain's uh, lagging. My dad had my second cousin on his lap, and and he's like he's like five or six, and so they were doing this game where he where my cousin would move his finger toward my dad's face, and my dad would go Arr! and act like he was gonna bite it. <laughs> but one time, uh, when he was doing that, he flew too close to the sun, and he like accidentally actually put his finger into my dad's mouth, and so when my dad went Arr! he actually bit down on his finger. <laughs> Hard enough to leave a red mark, and he started crying in the middle of this like <laughs> lobby restaurant area. And well, meanwhile, I'm cracking up on the other side of the table. It's like cue the Minecraft eating sound effect. Like, oh. <laughs> 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 and it just like says, "You died." Oh man. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, now that that's out of the way, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this episode, shall we? Sure, let's go. So, um, I, I I came up with this one night while I was brushing my teeth. Actually, funnily enough, so uh, considering we're a podcast and the main way podcasts are delivered is via um, audio, listening to it through your ears, I figured we talk about sound. So, real quick, let me ask you: uh, if you had to give up one of your uh, five senses, what would you give up? One of my five senses. Yeah, so sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. Yeah. Each one I'd, has their own distinct advantages and disadvantages. I would probably say taste. Yeah. Yeah, I would probably either go taste or smell. Simply because uh, hearing and seeing are, are very important as far as like yeah. maintaining an awareness of your surroundings. You know, safety goes. With, although with, you can argue that smell goes right along with that, because like, yeah, I, I feel I feel like taste is probably the least useful out of the five. Yeah, but I love food. <laughs> well, here's the thing: you can still eat food, you just don't have to taste it. Yeah, okay. Actually, but then that... if if you here's the thing: if you lose the taste, if you lose your taste, you can eat things that you didn't previously enjoy, like you things that you've previously thought were disgusting because you won't be able to taste it be that as it may eating that makes eating no longer enjoyable at all eating i already feel like it's kind of a uh, a um a burden simply simply because you just have to sit there and chew and eat and swallow and it and it's time consuming right and they're also cooking is time consuming but what makes it worth I mean, it is I being just... able to enjoy the taste of the food you just purchased and or cooked if you don't yeah. get to enjoy that eating is entirely a burden I just eat to survive. <laughs> I mean, I get that, but there's there's no longer that in- enjoyability of, of tasting the deliciousness of the food you're eating. Yeah, but it's enjoyment over practicality. I mean, if you're going to lose one of your senses, all of your other senses are a lot more useful than being able to taste things. I suppose that's true. Enjoyment of it. And, that, I mean, and there's enjoy, always a enjoying of, the taste of enjoying the taste of something is just a luxury that you can true. go without. There's always a question of if you if you sacrifice your sense of touch, does that also is is it safe to assume that you would also no longer feel pain? That's actually a good question. Because pain doesn't necessarily have to originate from being touched. Yeah, no, because I mean you can have pain on your insides. At, you're not really touching anything like you're not using your oops touching sense yep that's true so i don't think it would eliminate pain entirely it's always you just wouldn't be like you just wouldn't be able to feel whatever like if you got shot you wouldn't be able to feel the bullet go in but you'd be able to feel the pain caused by the bullet Mm. yeah it would just be a sudden sharp sensation of pain yeah Ugh. I mean, I guess, Anyways. you know what, if that's the case, I would probably sacrifice touch then. Why? I don't know. Because well, I like smelling, hearing, tasting, and seeing. <laughs> um, I still think I'd give a, I'd get rid of taste. And that would amplify all my, other, all my other senses, and I'd be able to actually, I don't know, I feel like that would 
be more helpful. Yeah, I could definitely see that. But that's uh, just my personal take on it. Leave in the comments below what you would, what sits you would yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll invite you onto the channel in the next video, and we'll actually cut your ears off. No, I'm just kidding. The, the next video that we take four months to create. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be like a Mr. Beast video, but instead of giving everyone, making everyone compete for money, it's, you have to compete to keep all of your senses. Keep all your, all your limbs. <laughs> your limbs. Oh, man. Real life squid games where you die. Yeah. So, um, I, I don't remember whether or not you have it, but I know David and I both have tinnitus, which is a, a big part of like, it, it affects your hearing. Yes. Do you have it? Yes, I do actually. Yeah, it's in my right ear. Is it uh, severe? Yeah, it's really frustrating. If you thought about it, do you think you'd be able to chalk it to, to like to nail down what the or like why you have it? Um, I thought it was originally um part of my wisdom teeth issues because they I I had a severely infected tooth back there um, before I had it taken out. So um, I thought it was that, but it started to, it started to um. It didn't actually go away. It was only gone for like a few days when I was on drugs, you know, after the surgery. Um, <laughs> yeah. But once once the, once that stuff ran out, then it just it came back and it's just constant in my ear. Mm. Right. Yeah. I I don't know if is that a thing. You can get tinnitus from having an infected tooth. Yeah, because like, uh, you're, you're a lot of times your teeth actually affect your 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 ears i mean they affect a lot of part of your head but they affect hmm. your ears a lot too because they're so close together and the nerves are all all right there but yeah uh, having having bad teeth can affect your ears and your and the rest of your head as well huh. well for me i think it's more than likely that i didn't wear uh hearing protection as frequently as i should have in a uh, band high school band mm. i will say as much of a as a pleasure that uh the high school band was and being in the band was wear ear protection that goes for any of you who are like about to be in band or are, are currently in band wear ear protection like they hand out they at my school anyway they handed out ear filters that were they're free for the first pair and they're like really nice filters too like you, you can be wearing them and have a normal sound level uh conversation but like exceptionally loud noises like crashing cymbals and uh you know loud instruments uh get filtered right out and they, they're muffled it's real nice yeah i probably i mean my job probably has issue, has effects on that too it's constant loud noise mm, yeah around where i work so and i think the worst like it it's me. It was It was even worse as I was on the drum line, right? Like those are some of the louder instruments in the band. Even though, um, like, they're not necessarily of a high pitch, it's still a really loud noise. Brian, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sorry, I had to cough. Okay. Sorry. I gotta, thought we lost uh, connection for a second there. Nope. <laughs> I could feel the cough coming up, and I was like, uh. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah, that's a, a unfortunate, you know, having ears means you might get tinnitus. So. Having ears. <laughs> if you, Ear drums, I should say. So, life hack, if you, uh, if you don't want tinnitus, cut, cut off, off your, your ears. ears. <laughs> which, which painter did it? Was that Van Gogh? Yeah. Van Gogh. Pull a Van Gogh, everybody. Just chop that thing off. I think. I don't remember. Yeah. I th I thought it was, but I can't remember. Uh, was it anyway. Van Gogh? <laughs> 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 Moving on from let's, uh, bodily let's, let's, harm. Uh, let's talk about um, sounds, right? So, what's your favorite? What's, what are some of your favorite sounds? Favorite sounds? Oh, yeah. uh, what are the things you love to hear? What is music to your ears in the metaphorical sense? Besides actual music. Yeah, um, that's what I meant. <laughs> uh, a lot of weapon reloading sounds sound absolutely beautiful. Like when you hear a shotgun racking a slug. Right. Oh, it's beautiful. Or the ping of an M1 Grand. 
Mm-hmm. It's gorgeous. Or like the tinkling of a, a shell casing falling on the ground. Yep. Mm-hmm. But not the actual shot because those are pretty loud. Yeah, those are pretty loud. They're unless you have hearing protection, they're really. And that's quite not something powerful. you want to hear in public. <laughs> no. <laughs> unless you're at the gun range. Yeah, no, probably not. Um, yeah, those are nice. I like. I don't like being right next to cars when it happens, but I like loud mufflers from a distance where it sound really nice, like the rumble of those cars. Um, I mean, I think people are stupid for putting those on their cars, but they sound nice. I see. And now I've, uh, we can get into like sounds we don't like later, but I've always hated loud mufflers. It's, it's like the classic textbook way of letting the world know you have a tiny penis. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to say that, but yeah. It's actually okay. So, <laughs> on that topic, uh, not we not the topic. <laughs> here's the thing, not the topic, out. not this topic of small peepees, but like the topic of decking at your car for no reason at all. Um, routinely, we have a car come into the shop that is a normal, basic Civic hatch- hatchback. Okay. Um, do you know what a Honda Civic Type R is? Type R. Uh, type R. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a manual Civic that's built for racing. I mean, it's okay. a racing car. Okay. Um. In fact, actually, they just Honda just put out their new 2023 line of cars, and the t- the the 2023 Type R is actually one of the fastest cars on the track that when they tested it. So, mm-hmm. um. But anyways, it's it they look really good. They look they sound really good. Um. But they're built for racing, so it's not something you want to like drive on the daily. Right, right. But um, but base value for those things, you're looking at like fifty grand just for the base model. That's not including any of the other packages that come with it. Um, so this, they're really expensive. So what this guy did, we had this guy come in, brings this car, and it's the, literally the dumbest thing. He has a normal Civic hatchback that he has decked out himself to look like a Type R and to sound like a Type R. So it's got the really loud rumble. It has all the large spoilers on the back. It's got all the wings and stuff on the side and on the back. It's like, you know, at first glance, it looks really nice. But then it's like you realize it's not a manual and go, oh, this is a type R wannabe. And then you get it up like you lift it up on the rack and you can see all the makeshift stuff that he's done to it. it looks so dumb. Because, like, this is stuff that he didn't, he didn't, like, buy the stuff and put it on them himself. Like, he, he made the, the attachments to it. The, like, the front grill, like, where the uh, radiator is, looks like it's been cut out with, like, a pair of dikes, like, diagonal cutters. And it's a really, like, it's a hack job. And then on the back, he's got his, like, his wings on the bottom of the car um, are, like, they they look like you just they're pla- like large plastic pieces that he bought at Home Depot and then just cut up and then screwed into the bottom of his car, and a, a couple of them have like hinges on it, but their hinges they look like hinges from a cabinet made in like ninth or made in like the seventeen hundreds. It's got like it's like gold and fancy. It's like a gold and fancy hinge that he put up there, mm. like that doesn't belong on a car. <laughs> As something you'd find like on a on a cabinet or a, a china cabinet or something, or a wardrobe. It it's like, like the the it's the funniest thing ever because it's like you know it looks cool from the top, and then, you know you you would think it was a Type R, and then you look closer, it's like it's not a manual. It's got all this gar- junk on it. The hood is an imitation carbon fiber hood, so it looks like carbon fiber, <laughs> but it's not. So it's like you're not really achieving anything extra here, dude. Wow, it's like you're just—he's just spent all that money on this to look cool when it doesn't even look that cool. Dang, that's like got the same energy as like the people who who like the kids who like put a playing card on their bike to make it sound like a motorcycle. Except yep. you're a kid, so it's not lame. You just want to look cool. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> It's it's yeah I don't know I I was working on that car the other day and I thought it was funny because it's like you you spend all this time and effort on this thing and it looks like crap. It's like uh, just ever, just so you can imitate another car that you couldn't afford. Do you ever go on the subreddit just rolled into the shop? No, but I've watched the YouTube channel just rolled in a lot. Right. Uh, 
yeah, there's a lot of that stuff on that um, subreddit where it's like, I mean, it's literally cars that have just rolled into the shop, but most of the time it's like crappy, like, you know, bad looking cars, or like, there's also a subreddit called crappy car mods, where it's just, you know, people who tried to mod their car and failed horribly. I love it when that happens. Um, anyway, so back to sounds and hearing. <laughs> Right, um, yeah. So, so okay, so we were talking about loud cars. One of the loudest, one of the most annoying sounds is when a car comes in, or when you hear a car that has its catalytic converter removed. Oh yeah, because it's just it. The exhaust goes straight from the the straight from the engine into the air instead of through that, and then out through the mufflers, which is what quiets it. It just goes straight out into the air, and so all you're hearing is pure engine noise. It is the most loud, frustrating thing to hear. It's so annoying. It like it blocks out everything you're trying to say because it's just so loud. And when they bring that into an enclosed space, <laughs> it's like you just, you can't hear your own thoughts. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. I hate that. It's the worst. Okay. What sounds bother you, or what sounds do you like? Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't get a chance to share mine. Uh, at the top of my list is the sound of sizzling bacon. Ooh, Or, or yeah. really any any food that, that makes a good sizzling sound in a like a frying pan. It, you know, it's, 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 it's all like, it's, it's, the, it's uh, the ear equivalent of when you smell a good smell coming from the kitchen. Mm-hmm. I had, I'm sorry, I had a hard time putting that into words. <laughs> no, you're you're fine. <laughs> tired. My brain's running slow too. Mm, yeah, or like when you're when you're out in the middle of nature, like you know, I whenever I go on like a hike in like the mountains of Colorado, and you can just you kind of hear the you, you don't you don't hear um you know anything man made you know you don't hear any car engines or uh like music or whatever you just hear like the occasional tweet of a bird and um, maybe a, a bush rustling because a moose is walking on it or past it and mm-hmm. maybe the, the soft uh, dull roar of a distant waterfall. That kind of thing. Yep. Yep. Sounds of nature. Yeah. Or, or um, uh, on the topic of nature, if you're in a cave, uh, like there's um if you ever go to have you been to um silver dollar city uh, oh, yeah, yeah of course you have there. i think i've been yep. there with you actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> um uh, the point is though they, they that whole theme park is built on top of a cave and um uh, when they go down there there's a part of the tour where they'll they'll turn the lights off and you'll just you'll sit in the dark and you can hear mm-hmm. you can hear like dripping stalactite stalactites and uh yeah, you know, between that and the, and the fact that it's just blissful silence, other than that, it's a nice, nice sound to have going into your eardrums. Yeah, I love that cave tour. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's a great. It's like not too long, and like they've really got the, the entr- path nailed out, the so you don't like fall entrance and die. is what the entrance is what scares me because it's like you're standing oh, on a giant for that, yeah. ledge. Or, yeah, like the massive just hole in the ground. You're like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. Have you ever had to go on, go down it while it's wet? Yes. Oh, dude, it's scary. <laughs> oh man. Did you did you ever try the um so if you're just in like if you've already paid to get in the park, you can just go on the tour for free as though it were a an a, a, an attraction like a roller coaster or whatever. You just have to be in line and be there at the right time. But for an additional fee, you can take a in the evening you can take like a lantern tour where you literally the only light you mm-hmm. have is um a lantern. Like a flame. I haven't lantern. got. Yeah, I haven't been able to go on that tour yet, but I've I've been wanting to for a long time. Yeah, that seems interesting. Um, uh, one more on the point of nature: uh, the sound of rain, specifically oh, yes. when it's when you're inside of the house and you can hear it pattering on the roof. Yes, That's a nice. I love that nice sound right there. That will lull me to sleep every time. Yeah, or or like on the hitting uh, hitting the window panes. And like it's not like ridiculously loud thunder either. You know, maybe the occasional distant um, boom 
to where like it's far enough that it's more it's like soft and not loud yeah it's like background just kind of yeah kind of lets you know it's there yeah in in the band we we played this piece called cloudburst by i think it was his name was eric whitaker his his last name was definitely whitaker but i i always have a hard time remembering what his first name was and uh part of the music it it was it was an adaptation of the original piece which was written for like a full orchestra and choir um so but there's there's a part in the the piece that we played where everyone puts down their instruments and just starts snapping their fingers and and when you have that many people snapping together it sounds like rain and and everyone was doing that except for the person playing the bass drum who would lightly feather the drum with a soft mallet and it sounded exactly like distant thunder it's it is it was incredible. I love it. It's like one of my favorite pieces we ever played. Yeah, I like that kind of stuff. That's so much fun. Mm-hmm. And I actually for that piece, uh, someone from a nearby like they had a, I guess they were the musician or maybe a assistant pastor like from a nearby uh, Catholic church brought in a real nice set of handbells that we played for the concert. It sounded beautiful. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> yep. <laughs> ah, I've listened to a lot of uh, Celtic music recently. Um, Celtic and Scottish music, so a lot of uh, flutes and whistles and bagpipes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Dude, that that stuff is just sounds that those musics that those instruments just sound so good. I love them so much. I actually want to learn how to play the bagpipes, but it just <laughs> costs a, it That's costs a, video a lot of money. right there. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, if you if you learn how to play the bagpipes, you have to learn how to play. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll by ACDC. Why? Because it's an awesome song, dude, and it's like the quintessential there... rock and roll song that has bagpipes in it. I didn't realize there were... it had bagpipes in it. I've never heard that song before. Oh, dude, okay, you need to listen to it after we finish recording here. <laughs> Put it on okay, the radio. What is it, what is it called again? It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Okay. Okay, interesting. Classic. Yeah, dude. I'm wanting Classic. To, I'm wanting to learn that that instrument. It's just a, a bagpipe chanter like the to practice on is like 120 bucks. <laughs> and then to get an actual set of decent bagpipes you're looking at like 3 to 400 dollars maybe I mean that's like a decent on the low end. Dang, dude! If you're if you're gonna get like a professional set, you're looking at seven to seven hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. Wow. So yeah, it's it's gonna be expensive, but it'd be so much fun. Yeah, shout out to that episode of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show where Mario made a vacuum out of Rowdy Rowdy Piper's bagpipes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh. Um. Okay. Did you see the new this the second teaser for the Mario movie? By the way, speaking of Mario, um, with the Mario Kart sequence. Yes. Yes, I did. That looks cool. You coughing again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm I'm used to you. I'm used to you talking a lot more. So it's like I keep keep getting these silences, and I'm like, yeah. Well, part of the issue is, is that we don't have our third co-host. You that's in that the is gas. true. Yeah, I know. It's like typically, from what I've listened to, just in the editing, is I'm typically the more the silent one. So mm, it's weird yeah. it when I don't weird. have you and David. Yeah, when I don't have you and David to run off of, like riff off of and stuff, it's kind of bizarre. It's throwing me off. Yeah, uh, but um, did you see someone on I think Twitter was like. Uh, new Mario movie looks good, but why do they have to bring in the woke, uh, gay rainbow colors into this? And it's a picture of Rainbow Road in the in the teaser trailer. It's like, bro, have you ever played a Mario game in your life? Come on, dude. <laughs> it's in space. Oh man, oh, that's funny. It's it's hard to tell whether or not they were memeing, but uh. Yeah, like trolling or something. Yeah, it like... definitely caused a little bit of a a a, 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 a brouhaha. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's bizarre. Yeah, people people are weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, least favorite sounds. I... Oh, sorry. What's up? No, I don't know. Okay, least favorite <laughs> sounds. We already talked about like loud loud car engines, which is actually on my list. 
Um, but any any really any loud noise that's like happens suddenly, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, granted, car I don't know horns. many people who are. Yeah, car horns. I hate horns. It's it's the worst thing ever, possibly. Um, you know, like when something falls, but you don't like it's like behind you and you don't see it falling, so you don't you're you're not ready to anticipate a loud noise happening when it hits the floor. So all you hear is yep. a sudden noise of it hitting the floor. <laughs> Dude, there was one time I, when I was working at Price Chopper that it was 6.30 in the morning. I had just finished up some paperwork and stuff. Um, so I went to the bathroom and uh, I like I went to the I went to the one in the back because it was more like clean and stuff than the front one. And um, I, lifted up, I lifted up the seat and everything and I was like, you know, going and then I went to leave and as I'm leaving the toilet lid slam down oh i freaking hate that and at 6 30 in the morning and it was literally it was dead silent in the back room was this and like that it, it stuck to your butt or, or like no like you, it you, was you'd already left the stall and it just like fell like I, it was as i was getting ready to leave the bathroom that is the worst so it just slammed down and oh my gosh i jumped so high i was like oh this is too early for this <laughs> <laughs> like i just want to go back to sleep the worst yeah, that I, I can't believe I didn't have that on my list. The slamming of a toilet seat after it sticks to your butt and then falls. <laughs> God bless whoever came up with the like slow the slow inches. closing ones. Oh, I love those, those are those are legendary. They're amazing. Uh, you know what else I don't like is snoring. My dad snores real loud, and when we were in in the, in the hotel room back in December in Wichita. Man, uh, you wouldn't believe how hard it was to sleep. I've heard I snore, oh, but only when I lay on my back. If I'm laying on my sides, then I'm fine. But if I roll on my back, I snore. Yeah, you know what? I've been told that I snore too, but I hope to God it's not as loud as my dad's. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad's does snore pretty loud. <laughs> yeah, it's like it, it's like that that like um, I frick. I think it was a TikTok that went viral. Of, of a, a, a guy, like, I think roughly our age, just sitting in bed in what I can only assume was a hotel room, and you can just hear his dad snoring super loud. I can't believe I didn't try that. If only. <laughs> Get famous off your dad snoring. Yeah, exactly. Promote the podcast. Hey, come listen to us talk about our dads. <laughs> I'm the, the son of that legendary famous guy who snores really loud. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> Like and subscribe for more bodily sounds. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> On tomorrow's episode, my mom has diarrhea. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> We're crossing over into some weird territory now. <laughs> uh, uh, you know what else I don't like? Screaming children. Oh, dude, I hate screaming children. Oh, my. It's like, it's not in like, at least when you're in somewhere like a theme park. You know that there are going to be people screaming. Yeah, like when you're when in like when inside a house and it's a small, relatively small room and in a closed space. Yeah, I can't. Or like man. in public in a restaurant or like yeah. in a grocery grocery store. It's like seriously, shut them up, <laughs> please. Shut them up. Yeah. I wish it wasn't. Oh no! You know what? I'm not going to finish that thought. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna quote uh, Grunkle Stan from Gravity Falls. Tell me, Suze, would it be wrong to punch a child? Anyway, <laughs> hashtag Willie Willie Afton. <laughs> hashtag relatable. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Playing the next FNAF game. Hashtag relatable. Ha, <laughs> lols. <laughs> uh, reminds me of the summer of 1969 when I killed all those kids. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, it was 1985. Uh, get you're it. right. Get your lore right. <laughs> well, no, I was like seeing that from the perspective of someone playing the game. Like, oh, this reminds me when I committed murder. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sixty nine was the moon landing. You're right. You're right. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Uh, That's the- what I said. What? Never mind. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> come on dude 
Uh, this sorry. is a family friendly podcast. That's why I didn't finish I'm it. I'll let kidding. the audience fill it in with I can, literally can't call you on that because I said penis earlier in this episode. Well, there it is again. Yeah, yeah, Gotta exactly. bleep it out again. Uh, the fire Jake, alarm. You can't say that. <laughs> the fire alarm is another sound I don't like. Um, and you know, I understand that the noise it makes is kind of different in every country, but the the noise it makes in the U.S. is the only one I've ever really known and come to dislike. It's a, uh, I mean, I get that you have to have a distinctive and unmistakable sound to alert people when the building is on fire, but man, the only ever time I've really heard that is during a drill, or like when some yep. kid pulls the alarm at church. Which has happened way too often. Mm. What are you trying to say? No, I'm kidding. I'm looking at you, Jake. <laughs> Listen, I haven't been a kid for almost a long time. 15 years. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's beside Dude, the point. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Okay, so off topic a little bit. Um, uh, so I'm 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 on the leadership team. That helps plan a, a homeschool conference every year. <laughs> yeah. At, um, we I'm on the the children's side, so we we there's we have our team that we, we basically um our team plans it, and then we have a bunch of volunteers that come. We watch we watch about 300 kids, mm-hmm. um, for two days, and um, I'm on the leadership team, and it was so we were getting we were planning because it's in April, and we always it's at the so we we rent out the hotel next to it and um you know i may blur that out like the location but anyways um we we rent out the hotel next to it and uh so we we're getting um rooms like cuz uh the leadership team has to stay at the hotel so we're right next to the conference center so we can just go in there as soon as like as soon as we wake up in the morning and um, so we were splitting up rooms for the guys because there's like se- uh, six of us or seven of us. And um, they nominated one of the guys as, as one of the leaders of the room because he's the oldest. And then they looked at me and were like, um, I think you're the next oldest. And I was like, are you serious? Like, I'm used to being the youngest in the group. Wow. Because like, I've been a part of this group for like six or seven years now. And I'm normally the youngest of the guys, which is like I'm always picked last for the for the rooms because nobody wants me in there. <laughs> but then they're like, "Oh, you're the next oldest. You get the next pick of uh, like you'll have your you'll lead your own room and he'll lead the run room." And I was like, "Are you serious? I'm the next oldest person. <laughs> like oh, wow. how how is that?" <laughs> I was like, "That doesn't seem right." Mm. It just made me feel really old because I've been a part of this group for years and years. Because I mean, even before I was on the leadership team, I was a kid in the conference for twelve years or however long it was. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I just made me feel old, so there's that. Back to sounds. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean that's that's kind of all I had on my sounds. I like you know least favorite sounds slash sounds I don't like list. Oh well, I will you know you um I, I'll I'll tell one quick story about a sound that I hated with every fiber of my being. Um, so back in 2020. I, <clears throat> me and uh, David, you weren't involved. You didn't go. I don't remember. You you were th- and you were like busy with something, I think. But me and David went with the youth group back to our old, uh, church summer camp for for like elementary school age. Was that when everybody got COVID? <laughs> it was. Yeah. Yep. It was a mistake. Is what it was. <laughs> but um. <laughs> I, you know what? I got out unscathed, so worth it. No. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, it was like a, you know, like a kind of a reunion deal. It, it was like a bunch of, uh, you know, mostly like junior and seniors in high school. Uh, since I was like one of the only people there that was, that had graduated high school, I was like unofficially a counselor. I was, well, it was, it was official, but like, because mm-hmm. I looked so young. All the staff assumed I was a, a camper anytime I like tried to talk to them. Um, but so they they um, we all got together in the like chapel, and they were um, they were before they like did the sermon. They uh, had this guy who was like supposed to be the hype guy to get the crowd all excited for whatever. And he comes in and he blows like a whistle, like we're talking like a metal like 
like uh like the kind of whistle that a you know the referee has at a sports game and he he blows it i don't know if he like blew as hard as he could but i'm assuming he did but we're in this like n- you know enclosed room in the chapel all the doors and windows are closed it 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 hurt it freaking hurt i i about yeah. stood up and walked out of out of the chapel it it may be pretty angry yeah dude those whistles are insanely loud a pretty pretty stupid move if ever there were one so pro tip if you're listening and you're like you happen to be trying to come up with ways to hype up a crowd don't blow a whistle especially if you are inside because those whistles are made to be used outdoors or at best an indoor gym but again like with a lot of people screaming so yeah 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 no Hmm. (laughs) don't do it (laughs) yeah those whistles are super super frustrating yeah especially when you don't know what's coming (laughs) Mm. oh yeah like just the worst (laughs) um and uh because um we could i wanted to talk about music a little bit in this episode simply because that's you know sound uh but honestly we could spend it we could probably spend an entire episode talking about just music um honestly that's a good idea i like that you know i did write that i i really like you know good orchestral moving oh excuse me sorry sweeping music Oh my gosh, I'm burping a bunch. I'm so sorry. I'm not doing it in the mic, though. I'm just like, it's stopping me <laughs> from talking. Yeah. Uh, you know, basically a lot of the stuff we played in my high school band, you know, uh, it's either classical music or it's music written to sound like classical music, you know? Yeah, I like I like non-lyrical music um like soundtracks for movies and stuff yeah instrumental because yeah so here here's my thought on it um one second here let me organize my thoughts <laughs> so here this is my thought on it music that doesn't use words um just instrumentals is more more or less limited in what they can in the stories that they can tell with just the instruments because you don't have words to basic to describe what the story you're trying to tell with it. Mm-hmm. So when you can when you can take like Lord of the Rings for instance, for for instance, whatever. <laughs> um, when you when you when you take a song and you can tell a better story with just instrumentals and you don't have to use words. That reaches more deep into me than listening to a song about somebody, someone singing about, you know, I'm my mind's blinking on a bunch of songs. Off song. All, all I can think of is rap, like hip hop songs. I don't want to hear a song about you rapping about knocking out thugs and stuff all the time. Like, it just I don't I don't like that kind of music. Unless you're I Weird Al Yankovic. That is an exception I will make. Yes. <laughs> but anyways, I I feel like they can, people tell better stories when they're just using instrumentals because they're more limited in what they have as like resources, so they're forced to dig deeper into a better story in order to get what get their point across to you, to the listener. Right. And so it tells a deeper story, a more meaningful story when you're just listening to an instrumental than when you're listening to a song with words in it because the English language can also often fail to um express emotions in the way that it should and so music doesn't have the limitations of of it it, i mean it's limited because it can't use lyrics but at the same time it's not limited by any type of language because it's using just pure emotion to get a story across Mm -hmm. and that kind of music for me is it, it hits deeper and so that's i i much prefer to listen to that type of stuff than anything with with lyrics in it right sorry went on a rant no that's fine that's that's the kind of deep conversation we love to hear on the time capsule podcast (laughs) i was just uh tweaking some settings for the time the speak pipe speak pipe widget um the by the the way I, i double checked that url it is 
uh, slash oh. the time capsule podcast. So make sure you include the word the in your URL. And uh, I, maybe I can. Li- I don't know if uh, you can. You, you, I don't think. You, I don't know if you'll be able to embed it necessarily, but you, I can give you a link to put on the 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 like um like show page on Spotify or whatever as well. Yeah, if I have. <sighs> You know what? Hold on one second, because I've been able to put links in the descriptions before, and it's let me see if they actually work or not. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing I have not checked. I've been doing it this entire time, and I haven't bothered to actually check. Oh man, that's that's not good. No, that does work. Okay, so if okay. I if I copy if you send me the link, I can copy and paste it into the description, and they can just click on it and take it take it from there. Cool. That definitely works. Uh, how are we looking for time? Uh, well, it depends on when you need to leave. But personally, I think we're we've got a fairly full full episode here. Yeah, I think uh, I think we've got enough. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, once again, so apologies to everybody. This if this sounds a bit rough. It's been a couple months since we've done this, yeah, so we. We're... I think <laughs> this year we should definitely do a December episode. I'm just going to say that right now. That's fair. Yeah. Hopefully, life that, doesn't get fair. insane again. But it is the holidays, so what can you do? Yeah, we we should. When that time comes around, we should definitely attempt it at least. Well, that's actually that's assuming we do a whole another year, anyways. I would like to go for at least three i would too if you know if things just don't get too out of hand Mm -hmm. and i don't think we should go for too long because i i do want there to be a significant uh, significant enough amount of time between when we stop and when we come back yep so there yeah we'll we'll have to um we'll have to talk that out in an official business meeting (laughs) (laughs) yeah anyway um Leave a message. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. We appreciate you thoroughly. Keep keep on coming. Y'all, y'all come back. You hear? <laughs> I'll come back now. Here, what is that from, dude? I that's a good question. Let me. You know what? I'll Google it real quick. Y'all come back. Now. I want to say like it's Beverly Hills. The name of a song by. Uh, no, I feel DJ like it's a Billy quote or from something. A show. Uh, wait a minute. I spelled it wrong. Pardon us while we look at this up. Yeah, DJ Hillbilly wrote a song that is titled that. Uh... Yep, the Beverly Hillbillies. I was right. Yeah. Welcome back now, you're here. I, you know, Gosh. I never watched that show. That was a good show. I haven't seen it in forever, though. It's old, but it was a good one. It's like up there with like Green Acres and stuff, like really good old classic shows. Had a really catchy uh, theme song to it too. (laughs) Okay. All right. Well, I think we're gonna wrap it up now. Uh, Okay. We already said that, didn't we? Uh, We did. Thanks for listening. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Bye, everybody. (laughs) Thank you guys once again for joining us on this month's episode of the Time Capsule Podcast. We are so excited to kick off a new year with you guys, and we cannot wait for you guys to come back and listen to every episode every month. Our intro music this year is Adventurous Intro 1 by Music 70 Our outro music is the same as it's always been, Chill Hot Main by Zach Arvalaha. Both of these songs can be found on pixabay.com. I highly recommend you go check them out. They're very useful. Thank you guys again. Um, we are so excited uh, for everything we have planned this year. And we cannot wait to get started with all of our plans for you guys. We hope you guys enjoy, and we'll see you in the next one.